Hi, welcome back to Layden Zola. Uh, today uh, is today that I'm going to uh, be canning my beets. Uh, this is a recipe that's been in my family for generations. Uh, I've altered it a little bit over time because uh, uh, the, the old recipe, the old way of doing things is they used a lot of sugar and a lot of stuff. Now we still have to use some sugar. I will uh, uh, leave the recipe uh, in the description below. Uh, so yeah, the first thing that we have to do, I guess, is uh, I have uh, 10 pounds of beets. <clears throat> There's 10 pounds in this big pot. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is uh, I'm going to cover it now with cold water, put it on the stove, uh, bring it up to a boil, then turn it down so that it's just kind of steaming for about 35 to 45 minutes, depending on the beets. So yeah, my uh, beets are... Uh, just about ready to come out of the pot. So now I'm going to make up my uh, brine solution. Okay, so what we need is uh, five cups of white vinegar. I use uh, uh, pickling vinegar. Okay, so five cups of pickling vinegar. Now my recipe calls for four and a half cups of sugar, <laughs> if you believe that or not. <laughs> yeah, there's no way I'm using four and a half cups of sugar. So what I'm actually going to use is I'm going to use two cups only. That's it. Just two cups of sugar, even though that's still quite a bit, but it's half of what they used to call for. Uh, and the next one is uh, spice. So what I have is my pickling spice and uh, I use a tea strainer for my pickling. Oh, sounds like the alarm just went off. So what I'll do with this now is I'm going to uh, mix the sugar in. I'm going to put this on the, the stove to let it boil for I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. Not real hard, just to make sure uh, the spices get mixed in real well and that uh, the sugar is dissolved. Is pour them in the small sink that I have. I sterilize the sink with uh, bleach, not water. I'm going to uh, dump my beets down in here. A little bit from the strain because the beets themselves kind of... Uh, Oh, block the drain. I'm going to run a little bit of cold water over these so I don't actually burn my hands when I'm doing this. Now they peel pretty easy. Most of the time you can just do it with your hands like this, but you have to be very careful because they're hot. Oh, my, my bucket I brought in for this, specifically for putting the beet skins in. When I cut my beets, I usually cut them in about quarter inch uh, uh, slices. Because I'm only using 250 milliliter uh, uh, bottles, I'm going to uh, cut them in half as well. So yeah, I got the kitchen uh, all cleaned up now and I'm just uh, waiting for my uh, pickles to uh, finish uh, briming in here. Now I only bring these up to uh, a good steam because right now they're just on uh, a medium low eat just to make sure the pickles and everything are all nice and warm but actually hot the main reason you do that is to make sure that uh, the pickles are actually 99.9% .9 cooked because uh, I'm going to use my uh, pressure canner today, but I'm not using it as a pressure canner. I'm going to use it as a steamer. So how I use my pressure canner as a steamer is as, uh, well, I'll show you guys real quick. So this is my pressure canner. There's a vent right here. So what I'll do, I will keep my beets in uh, the steam for uh, 15 to 20 minutes. And uh, how I do that is when I have a full 
steam on the inside, that's when I start. And I can tell when this one is actually shooting full steam out and this valve pops up. Then I know I have full steam on the inside and that's when I'll start my timer, timing of the beats being steamed in my pressure can. Uh, we're all ready now to actually start bottling. I'm going to take the beats off the stove, place them down in my sink because it just makes it easier to be able to uh, pick them up. And what I'll do is I'll uh, fill up each bottle. piece in there. It's about an inch down from the top. Now my beets are not 100% cooked. Pretty close to it, but not quite. That's why uh, the main reason I don't really cook my beets to the point where they're mushy is because once I put them in the steamer, they'll cook some more. And they'll actually sterilize them all at the same time. So the brine solution, which we actually pour into each bottle. clean the rims. Just finger tight. You don't want to reef them right down. I put them a little tiny bit tighter than what I would do if I was pressure canning. These rims have all been sterilized. So here's my canner. Put it down here. Open it up. Take it out. Make sure that the, the valve, this area is free. It is. This one looks good. That one's okay. Uh, always check your seal to make sure it's good. No cracks or anything like that. That's just something I do every time. Uh, when you're not using it as a pressure canner, it's not quite as important, but uh, I still do it anyway. So we don't need the lid right now. Okay, I'm going to bring you guys over so you can actually see right down inside the pressure canner. Or at least I'm going to try to get you guys to that point. There you go. So now this thing's already got a base. Sometimes I might put in a little bit more when I'm just steaming because uh, that's really all I'm doing. I'm not doing a pressure canner. And this is hot water that I'm using, just hot water from my tap. Because the bottles are still hot, but they're not boiling hot. So you always want to try to uh, use the same temperature. Maybe a little too, but I always like to put a little bit of vinegar in my water. What it does is it stops the bottles from having that uh, film, the cloud on the bottles when they're done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in my 500 milliliters in the bottom. Because these are all different. All my bottles are a little bit different in size. So that's those guys. And I do have extra spacers. So now these guys are all going to go in here. Now I'm not sure if you guys can actually see the steam coming out of that little vent valve, but it is pretty much going full steam now. Uh, not just kind of pulsating, now it's just a steady steam. So now we wait for 15 minutes and uh, we should be all done. 
slowly. No pressure left. So you lift it up away from your face. Looks good. Everything looks like it worked quite well. That's already starting to pop as soon as I took the lid off. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, I'm going to take the pressure canner. Now I do this. It's pretty heavy. Most people wouldn't want to do this because it is heavy. I'm going to lift it off. I'm going to put it in the sink. It just when it's down low, it's just easier to take them out. Now I put. Uh, I should show you guys. Uh, yeah. So I put two tablecloths down because I don't want to lay a hot bottle on a cold surface. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked the video or if you got anything out of it, hit that like button. Maybe consider subscribing. Uh, leave a comment. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And uh, hit that like button and that bell notification so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And thanks for watching.